climate change affects everyone and will continue to affect millions of the world's poorest people. The world's people have spoken. really interesting kind of mixing your real life with this digital world. So yeah, that's what I saw the pit behind me. My one little moment. This is my one little moment. John Rubio. Good morning, Sabu. Thank you for having us. We are very excited to be here because this is actually the first community boost we are doing in the Philippines. And for that special honor, we actually chose the Queen City of the South, Cebu. So we're here today. We wanted to thank our partners, the ICT. We wanted to thank DPI, the Department of Tourism, and Bayan Academy. Thank you for helping us put this, put this together. So as we share, you can see, Facebook is built around people. We're built around building communities, helping people connect to each other and to the businesses, communities that they love. And with that, I just wanted to share a really quick video to get us off, which is over the past year where we've worked with companies, we've worked with small and medium-sized businesses, we've worked with governments, nonprofits to talk about the things that matter the most, things that inspire us, things that innovate. And with that, let me just play a quick video to talk about these things. I think it's really interesting kind of mixing your real life with this digital world. So many things are happening on the platform and that's why we wanted to come here today as a community to talk about these things. So we have an exciting day planned. Again, my name is John Rubio. We're here to talk about how to, you can use the platform to build communities, right? how you can connect with each other, and how businesses can leverage that to grow their businesses, to grow local communities and economies. 
Before we get into that, I just wanted to share my Cebu story. I actually, I love Cebu. I was here just a year ago, right? So this was at my, this was my actual post. So that's my lovely wife. We went here. You know, we had a, we had a nice meal in Abaca. In the evening, we were in uh, Ibiza. But the real reason we went here, and it actually relates to why we're here today, we went here because we were, we were buying furniture. We were moving house, right? And my wife said. Did you know the world's best woven furniture is actually here in Cebu? So we actually flew over so that we could go to the warehouse. And that's actually the, the picture up there. So that's my wife testing out one of the actual chairs. So this is actually in Cebu. World's best woven furniture is here. And that's why we went here. That's why I love Cebu. It's a great place where you have all of these beautiful places. You have these great alcoholic communities, products and services that are not just best in the Philippines, but our best in the world. So what we're here today is we wanted to share with you our mission, which is to give people the power to build community and bring the world closer together. So when we talk about Community Boost, what is Community Boost? It is us doing our mission, our purpose, to help you as a local community, a Cebu community, whether it's a small and medium-sized business, whether it's a non-government agency, whether it's a government agency, how can we help you connect each other so we can do things like help support people, help grow economies? That's why we're here today. So I wanted to talk about three things really quickly. The first thing is social impact. The next thing is about what we recognize as our responsibility to you as users. And the last is innovation. In a platform where more than 2.5 billion people use it every day, we want to talk about how you can innovate and how you as a community can leverage that base and innovate as well to sell your products and services, to connect and serve your communities. So let's talk about social impact first. It's really interesting because when we see people and businesses connect, we drive a significant economic impact. 90 million small and medium-sized businesses use our platforms every single day to, do, to connect with people, to connect businesses and brands with people to push their products and services. 90 million. And what's interesting is that the same tools that are available to our largest clients are available to small and medium-sized businesses such as yourself. So if you sell woven furniture, if you sell woven fabrics, the advertising, the targeting, the communication tools that's available to our biggest clients are also available to small and medium-sized businesses. And that's amazing because when you think about it, in the Philippines, how important small and medium-sized businesses are, they represent the large majority of companies. Businesses, small and medium-sized businesses such as those found in Cebu, drive 65%, two out of every three jobs in the Philippines is created because of a small and medium-sized business. 25% of the export revenue is driven out of small and medium-sized businesses, such as, again, Cebu and furniture, right? When you look at it, on our platform, really interesting, there are 50 million Filipinos, 50 million, one out of every two Filipinos is connected to a small and medium-sized business in the Philippines. About 40 million connects outside, and what's not here is a very interesting stat. There's about 110 million people outside of the Philippines connecting to a small and medium-sized business in the Philippines. Because, again, it's made by the Philippines but loved by the world. So, on our platform, businesses are finding ways to connect with different consumers. But what's interesting is these are macro stats. I wanted to share, because Facebook is built on stories, they're built on my Cebu story, for example, visiting here to buy furniture. There are also these stories we love sharing, for example, of a small and medium-sized business. So this is uh, Catherine. She's a retired math teacher. But what she decided to do was to create a small business. It's, you can see here, it's called Balay Tablea. The business she builds is something that was very core to their community, right? So again, Tablea, very core to her community and town. So what she said, she wanted to build a small and medium-sized business around that. And because the platform, which connects more than 80 million Filipinos to more than 2.5 billion people globally, 
she's now able to get customers, not just in her local area, she's able to sell her tableya throughout the Philippines and even to other people throughout the world. And because of that, and as she mentioned, she was able to help build jobs for the women in her community. So because of that platform, because of that connection, right, the same connection that's available to all you business owners here, is she was able to now sell, right? She's able to protect what was most core to her community, which is this special way of making this product. And she was able to give jobs to the community. I also want to share another really interesting story from this region. I love these stories because they talk about the inspiration. They talk about the innovation that comes from local communities and the entrepreneurs that you have here. So this story, I'll, I, I won't spoil the surprise when you watch the video, but there was a unique challenge that one of your fellow provinces uh, encountered last year. She used to sell to a small community within, within, their, within her province, but then something changed and she had to innovate. And what's interesting is how she then leveraged the platform to start going beyond that. So I'll, I'll let Jocelyn tell her story. I am Jocelyn Gobres Militar, the owner of Jocelyn's Food Products. Chorizo is a product that every family would like to have for breakfast, and that is what my mom thought of making for the business. We only have to rely to word of mouth. Boracay is one of our major markets. It comprises about 70% of our business. In the year 2018, the government declared that Boracay should be closed. So it was really a major blow to the local economy in Aklan. And of course, our company is one of those who suffered that. And that is where we went into digital marketing. The first effort that I did for the digital marketing at UC is I started a website and started marketing through Facebook. We use Facebook Messenger to communicate to our customers or inquiring for what is the price, what is the product, what are the location where Juicius is located. Why not create a bot that will allow us to answer the call automatically and I will not answer 1 a.m. in the morning about those inquiries. So I created Juicius Foods Messenger chat bot. It makes our life easier, it's easy to market our products to your customers. We reach certain clients that's not in Burakai, from Samuanga, from Davao, from Pangasinan, from Batangas. So from there, we can also have stable income also for the sales. where she talks about how because of this challenge she was able to leverage the platform to market to customers in Mindanao, in the Visayas, in Luzon. She was able to use, for example, chatbots to drive and interact with their customers so that they didn't have to respond at 1 a.m. They let our platforms help support her grow her business. <laughs> and using that challenge of having Boracay closed, she was able to grow her business through the platform. So the first, social impact, very excited about the way we can partner to help drive local communities and local economies. And actually, a large portion of this afternoon for the small and medium-sized businesses here, we have uh, certain members of the team who will talk about helping you do just what you still did as well for all your businesses here in the community. So next, I want to talk about responsibility. So we do is we recognize as Facebook that we have a unique responsibility where almost every Filipino uses Facebook. Everyone uses Messenger. Throughout the globe, so many people use it. We have a unique responsibility to make sure that it's a safe place. It is a place that fosters, I'll call it positivity. It's a place where we prevent bullying, harassment, and harm, and hate speech. We want to make sure we protect people. And I love sharing stories. So let me just share why this is personally important for me. So my son just turned 13 uh, about two weeks ago. So after he blew his cake, the very first thing that he did, it was so interesting, it popped up on my phone where there was a friend request. So it was my son had set up his first uh, profile page. He had asked me to be his first friend. So I was partly super proud because uh, I told my wife, hey, I was, I was his first friend request and not my wife. So if anyone of you knows my wife, don't tell her that I tell the story. The second was, 
one of the first things he decided to do was to open a Facebook page, right? Because now it's about him getting connected. And what does this have to do with responsibility? My 13-year-old son just joined Facebook. So for me and everyone in Facebook, it's our mission, it's our responsibility to make sure that the platform is safe. Because I want to make sure that it's as safe for you as it is for my 13-year-old son. I want to make sure that it's a platform where he can connect with people, where he can express himself and not have to worry, for example, about bullying and harassment and so forth. So I'll quickly talk about the three things we do for uh, our responsibility. One is we tackle the spread of harmful content. We do this in a variety of ways. The first is we have put in about 30,000 people just to ensure that the platform is safe, that our community standards are upheld. The amount we spend on safety and security is more than our entire revenue base seven years ago in 2012. What we've also done is heavily invested in, for example, uh, technology that finds about 90 to 99% of the bad stuff and it gets taken out even before you see it. So that's the first, we're tackling the spread of harmful content. The second is we're increasing transparency around the data we collect, around your privacy. So for example, what you see here is a feature we call, why am I seeing this? So one of the, the most common question I get anywhere I go is, John, how does the algorithm work? Why do I see this feed? Why don't I see so and so? So what we've done is we've actually made it transparent. You can see this tool so that you can find out what algorithm is saying why you should see a post. And beyond the transparency, if you go use this, there's actually the ability to control what you see. I want to see more of this, I want to see less of this. So the control of the algorithm is actually now in your hands. We also have a thing called off Facebook activity, which then says that we will share with you the data we collect outside of Facebook, and if you choose to not have that collected, it's a button that's going to be available towards the end of this year. So increasing transparency. Lastly, preventing election interference. We have done, I think, more than three large takedowns of coordinated and authentic behavior to make sure that the platform, again, is a place that's safe. It's a place where you can connect properly. So if there's something negative that's happening, we've taken those down. So we do things, we prevent the spread of harmful content, we make sure that there's transparency and privacy, and we help prevent election interference around the world. I want to share a quick video around community of how people are using it for the positive. I'm so good guys, I'm going to get a hand cap. 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 Ang ako ang ina-share sa akong mga higala ano, kung saan mag-alaga sa akong mga anak kung saan ka paano ka maging role model sa mga mga anak kasi na siya nga na i-upgrade sa akong ang boy sa Facebook gibalik niya itong uh, breast pump tapos sa tayo niyan po na niingon siya nga nangita siya ang breast pump kay naglisod siya o padalde sa iyang anak kay nagpaling man siya tapos maglisod ang pwede ang mga bata sa iyahang breast. Pagkahuman, kailangan dun siya ang battle ang, ang bata. Moto, nimension ako iyan ang pangalan sa katong nagbaligya. Muna doon ay pangita ng ayon pen. Hmm. At least happy food ko nga, nabalan ako nga, okay na dahil muna dito ay pangita. Hmm. I share this story in this section under responsibility because I think this is a great example of what happens when you can use Facebook for good. So the, the smart parenting app she mentions there, it's actually a Facebook group. So there are groups for pretty much everything, but I use this example because it's an example for where par new parents can connect with other parents to learn how to be a better mother. There are sites, for example, for me to go to learn how to be a better father. Right? There's also then the ability to connect businesses. So if you if, if, if you read or listen carefully, you, you heard about a special pump so that someone could support the child with a cleft palate. 
How would that have happened before in a world 15 years ago without Facebook? Right? We're enabling the connection for things like what Frenelink talked about. To connect with other mothers, to find very specific products and services that she needs. We're taking our responsibility seriously so that we can maximize the good stories of Frenelink uh, throughout the country. So we talked about social and economic impact. We talked about our responsibility. Lastly, I want to talk about innovation. Facebook is built on innovation. For about 15 years, most of what we did was about connecting communities in this equivalent of a town square where you said something and it was heard by hundreds of thousands of your followers. What we're now also realizing is people love messaging, whether it's one is to one or one is to group, sort of a more private living room. So what we're doing is, from an innovation perspective, we are connecting, we will make our products interoperable. So whether you use Messenger, whether you use WhatsApp, whether you use Instagram Direct, all of these will now become a seamless messaging experience. And more importantly, this will now be encrypted end-to-end -end so that you can ensure that all those messages in your private living room are really private. What we're also doing with this is two things to help further support small and medium-sized businesses. The first is around payments. So we will create a unified payments platform on top of uh, Facebook so that you can continue selling on marketplace on groups and so forth. The second is around commerce to give you more tools as a seller and as a buyer to help facilitate transactions and to protect you. So lastly, we build for people. So in order to do that, we need to understand people. And a lot of what we'll talk about today is built around four things. Curation, which is in a world where there's so much content. Just as a small trivia, I'm not sure any uh, many people know this, but Philippines is the second in the, in the world with the amount of time that people spend on the internet and mobile. It's a crazy stat, right? We're number two. Of all the 190 plus countries, Philippines spend the second most amount of time on their phone on the internet. And there's so much content. So curation is about how do you get found? If you're Giselle, how do you get your Longanisa found by the right customer at the right time? That's curation. Community. How do you build communities? Sort of like Fred and Lynn's story. How do you create communities for mothers? How do you create communities around people who like furniture? How do you create communities around exercise, around health, and so forth? So there's going to be a lot of talk today about how we do that. Conversation and commerce all lump together. Conversation is what we talked about where you're able to connect in a private living room setting to each other and to businesses. And finally, commerce. How can you sell? Right? So for example, how can you turn the story of Jusil into your own story? Because in the end, I think when we talk about social impact, when we talk about people, when we talk about businesses, I think Facebook's great power is the ability to do this. We can help you turn your great ideas into excellent opportunities. With that, I'd like to say we look forward to connecting with you throughout the day. Have a great day. Thank you.